Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at G-Scatter. G-Scatter is a beautiful add-on that is currently in its beta and it's made available by the folks at grasswall3d.com. I'm gonna put a link in the description that will bring you right here where you can download this tool for free. It's impressive, it's beautiful, it has its issues and for sure we're going to go ahead and talk about it. A huge shout out to the community for pointing me to this direction and telling me about this beautiful add-on, you know, so I can share it with you guys. So for you to actually get started, you need to grab it you know by simply coming over to this link which or the link which you're going to find in the description and download it one thing to keep in mind is this is not going to work with any version of blender that is lesser than blender 2.93 so with blender simply open right here all you need to do is go over to edit go over to preference and install it now most of you guys would end up having issues working with this add-on and i will tell you why now for you to actually get the most out of this add-on let's actually go ahead and delete this cube for you to get the most out of this add-on you need to do this okay you need to do this now let me explain if you have the object selected let's make sure we have our power select turned on if you have the object selected you need to you know go over to your edit mode if power select you have to double click to do that and then you need to scale the platform or the object you want to scatter on or you make the edits within the edit mode anything you do within the object mode is not going to fly for this add-on. It's just one of those things. You just, you know, it is what it is. It's just one of those things. It's not going to fly with this add-on. So double click and jump all the way back. And right now, if you press N on the keyboard, with that add-on installed, you would notice we have the G scatter. So with G scatter, we can click right now and add the grid. And then there's an asset browser right here. So with asset browser, you also need to click, click on any of this stuff add them to the scene if you like to add them to the scene scatter them on the selected object that you have if you like to scatter these things and at the end of the day just simply click on ok so you can scatter as much things as you want and this is fine next thing you need to do is you can play with the density okay and then you can also play with the positioning you can also go in and paint where you would like these things to be so let's say we like to paint this around so let's just go ahead and make some paintings like this all right so once you're done making your paintings you can increase the density if you want as well and then click on the brush to let go and once you're done you can now see how beautiful this is so in case you're thinking about scattering a lot of things you can do you know you can add as much things as you want you can go back click on the asset right here and you can select any of them for example we can say we'd like to get this uh rib what i think that's what it's called and then we can scatter this as well and once that scatters Click on OK and you can see that you can click on this as well. So maybe you just want to scatter these things around parts like this. And uh, this is this is quite beautiful. All right. This is quite beautiful. Increase this as much as you want as well. If you're thinking about playing with the scale, that's also something you can do. So you can also play with the scale as well. If you want to make some randomization, you can do all of that. And that is more like what you could do with it. You can also choose to paint how you want the scales to be, and that is fine. But then this is where every one of you guys will be having issues, okay? So you definitely would have issues with this if you don't stick to these things. Now, if you don't stick to the original or the first thing which I just showed you guys, you would have issues. And let's talk about the issues you might probably be facing or you would probably face if you neglect any of the stuff I've just said. And what I'm talking about is this. Let's believe, let's actually start with a grid. Let's believe you have a grid. And then you choose for some reason to scale this grid right here without going to the edit section. If you press N on the keyboard and select G scatter and click on surface and add the grid and click on asset browser and click this to make it, you know, the asset you want to scatter, click on scatter to scatter that. And then finally you choose to click on OK. This is just going to be scattered right here. Now you can increase the density as much as you want. You can do whatever you want. And this is, I mean, this is how much you can get. If you choose to play with the scale, this is also how much you can get. So for this, there is also a remedy to it, but I don't really think that this is what the risk, but then let's talk about the problems and, you know, talk about the remedies. So how do you remedy yourself with something like this? So what you can do is by simply going over to geometry node tab, you can now go over to this section that we have as point skill. So right over here, and then you can throw in a transform so click and add the transform right there and with this transform you see we can transform this so how do we inherit the transformation in terms of scale that this grid has over to this one so what you need to do is this simple you need to press the tab key i'm sorry you need to hold on uh, shift and a on the keyboard and then you need to get 
and object info. Now, once you get the object info, you need to click on object, click on the grid, and then wire the scale over to that. And that is just the only way that you can fix this. So let's go back to layout and also scatter some more stuff. And yes, you will be able to now do all of this. But the problem still remains that anytime you choose to do some vertex painting, you need to come down to this point and do it right here. Now, failure to do it like so, you'd not be able to get anything working. So stick to working from the component mode first in terms of scaling your object and also getting the most out of it before using it as a surface you would like to apply your meshes or just, you know, simply apply your assets on. So if you're also thinking about working with any of the assets that you've created before, maybe you like to scatter those assets as well. Yep, that is also a possibility. So let's just simply move that, make sure we have the power select, double click, and uh, get this right here, control and D, you know, get this right over there. And let's just say we'll have this here. Let's double click and jump all the way out, right click, smooth that shade, scale this down, and we can select this object and make it an object. So we can set it as an object to be scattered. And because we've already outlined it as an object that would like to scatter, we can drop the scale down a little bit like so. And uh, just like I said earlier, you can now go in and you can paint just where you would like these things to be. So I can just paint across at the point like that. That is where I would like it to be. And then click on this button to get all the way out, increase the density, and uh, we can also choose to increase the scale. So you would also notice that we're having the same potential problem like we have with the crippling. And for this, just because you chose not to adhere to what I said earlier, you would have to go all the way back here and redo it all over again. So it can be very annoying and stressful. So to stop or, you know, to not get into this problem. So let's go in and throw in that transform one more time, which is this. And then let's also go in and throw in the object info, which is that, all right? So for you not to get into this frustration, you need to just stick to what I said. So this is basically how you can manage these things if you choose to scale this object by default without using the component mode. And for sure, I know a couple of you guys will be asking things like, what about sculpting? How do we deal with that? Now, if you're thinking about using your sculpt, that is also something that you can easily work with. So instead of doing this, which for sure you might be tempted to do, just simply, you know, uh, let's switch this. All right, so just simply go over here, scale this all the way up. Let's subdivide this bad boy. Maybe subdivide it one more time. Just going to scale this all the way up to a point like so. Double click, jump all the way out, go over to your sculpt, and at this point, you can actually work with it. So, Blender still sees this as it is within its initial scaling point or scaling unit or, you know, initial scale. I'm just going to go ahead, tap G on the keyboard to switch to grab, press F on the keyboard, scale this all the way up, and now we can make some adjustments. So, if I make all of the adjustments that I want to make, so let's believe we're just creating this um, sort of thing, and... Um, we can go right here, have that there, select this object, move this object right over to the point like that. Let's do the same thing which we did earlier. Jump right in, control B that, roll this in, make sure we have it, jump all the way out, select this object, press N on the keyboard, switch over to grass hold, click, make sure that we have the grid, then select the, you know, the cube, which is now our asset. Make sure it's an object, and that way you have this beautiful thing everywhere so if you like to paint it across the edges okay no problems all right so you can easily do that so let's just go in and reduce the size and we can paint these across the edges like so and we can also do some more stuff so i'm just gonna go in you know press f one more time and we can scatter that around scatter this around and uh, scatter this around so it's just quite interesting that this add-on is free so you can grab it and of course a huge shout out to the folks at Grasswall for making it possible so we can do that click right there to get that out all right so next thing which we'll do is we'll go over to our asset browser and then we would pick on one of these so let's just find one let's grab this simply say scatter scatter that click on ok make sure they have it right there then click on this button and you can now easily scatter these things around so i'm just going to increase my brush size one more time and quickly scatter this around these areas okay so this is how easy it is for you to now easily scatter stuff and even control them so just in case you would like to grab this there is going to be a link in the description that will bring you right over to where you can grab it on for sure a huge shout out to the folks at grassworld 
for making this one possible. So just in case you're looking for an add-on that can easily help you scatter stuff by simply taking advantage of the geometry node that exists in Blender 2.93 this add-on is here for you. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and for sure if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and I'll see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace